Hi guys and uh, welcome back. We're going to be doing a flip lesson today on minerals. This is the first part, um, the first topic within the rocks and minerals unit. After this we'll be doing sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. But we start with minerals because minerals are what make up those other things. So here is an example of a whole bunch of different minerals and you'll notice probably a pretty big array or variety in color. Some examples of minerals. Minerals can come in a wide range of sizes, shapes, and colors. Don't ask me why there's a kid in this picture. I have no idea. An interesting thought here, these are actually all the same mineral type. Um, something to pay attention to and to hold on to that thought for a little later on. Okay, stalagmites and stalactites in a cave are all considered minerals. This is quartz, the most common mineral on earth. Quarries, we, do, we often have um, quarries in order to mine for minerals. Minerals are used as resources quite a bit. Here's some more quartz. This is actually amethyst quartz. This might be some of your uh, birthstones. I'm not sure which month it is, but it is a birthstone. Um, quartz comes in a variety of colors as well. And uh, you'll notice here this one is purple. That means it contains a little bit of iron. Some more quartz. These things sometimes can go for a lot of money. This is going to be an example of a rock full of garnet. If you see that red that's in that rock, that's garnet. That's the same thing that you have there on the left side. Okay, this is an example here of garnet. Okay, so let's talk about minerals. Taking a look at this group of minerals, we have um, a number of different things here for each. So first, pyrite is going to be made of iron and sulfur. Quartz is made of silicon and oxygen. Sphalerite has zinc and sulfur, so you'll see some overlap. Okay, there's another sulfur here. Okay, we've got carbon here. Um, see, I don't see another carbons, but there's uh, calcium. Calcium can be in a few different minerals, etc. So certainly there's some overlap. All minerals are made of elements. Elements. So that's going to be number one for you. All right? They're all made of elements. So this is the periodic table of elements. You'll be working with this a little more when you guys get to chemistry. Um, but you'll notice some that we see on here. We'll, we'll notice definitely throughout the year with minerals. Uh, hydrogen is certainly one that can be in minerals. You might see a carbon. Uh, you might see a nitrogen, an oxygen, a sulfur, silicon. And you might even notice they actually um, all tend to belong to that same part of, the, of um, the, uh, the periodic table of elements here. Okay, so where and in what phase do you tend to find minerals? Now, minerals are tend, to, tend to be found in the crust, Earth's crust, and they definitely tend to be solid. So certainly uh, another characteristic um, of minerals. Okay, you'll notice like things like calcium, um, the, these tend to repeat themselves, oxygen and silicon. Oxygen and silicon typically um, make up many, many minerals. In fact, if you added up the percent by mass for both of these, you know, you get a pretty high number, and these things tend to um, range in the 70 to 80 percent range of elements found in the Earth's crust, and usually in the form of minerals. So usually in the solid phase. Okay, are they organic or inorganic? Well, organic means made of things that were living or are living, something that has to do with life, and inorganic is never living, not once living, never will be living. Um, oxygen tends to rule the domain of the inorganic, and this is where our minerals tend to fall. It doesn't count as a mineral unless it is or inorganic, so go ahead and circle one. In this case, you should be circling inorganic. The minerals are inorganic. They're not made of things that have been alive. Finally, and this is going to be number four, minerals are not something that's created. Human beings can't produce minerals. We can't make them. They do occur naturally in the environment. If it does not occur naturally, but it looks a lot like a mineral, still not a mineral. So in our definition, okay, you should go ahead and um, write something down that includes these things. So a mineral is a something that made of elements and solid and, I don't know, include those words in your, in your uh, definition there for number five. Moving to number six. Now these properties, by the way, feel free um, to pause any time. If you need to pause, go ahead and do that. Let's talk about mineral properties. 
Luster is the way that light reflects off of a mineral. And it can either be metallic or non-metallic. Okay? These are some things that you're going to be working with in your mineral lab. You're, tomorrow, when you come into class or whatever next class you have, you're going to come in. We're going to, I'm going to give you guys a ton of minerals, and it'll be up to you to identify what they are based on their characteristics. You can only do that if you know what the characteristics mean. So luster is the first one, often the most important one. This is the one we look to first, and it can be metallic or non-metallic. What do I mean? Metallic. Look at those ones on the top. Those are all minerals that are metallic. In other words, they shine like a metal. Okay? They shine like metal. That's what we think of when we think of a metal. On the bottom, those are some examples of non-metallic. The one on the left, we refer to as vitreous. You do not need to know that word, but you do need to know the difference between metallic and non-metallic. Dull is another example. So those two look that way, and those are both examples of non-metallic. So the big difference, metallic versus non. Some more examples. So this one on the top left is pyrite or charcoal pyrite. I honestly don't remember, but it is certainly a metallic mineral because it shines like a metal. Let's talk color. Color is the least important of the categories, the characteristics of minerals. Why? Because, <laughs> because it's not a good indicator of what a mineral is. Some minerals can be different colors. I mentioned before, quartz. There's purple quartz. We call that amethyst. There is clear quartz. We just call that quartz. There is pink quartz. We call that rose quartz. There is gray, dark gray, like black quartz, and we call that smoky quartz. So there's many, many different types. Something to keep in mind that color is not a good indicator. So when you're looking at your mineral chart tomorrow during your lab, and a mineral is green, and it says, oh, this mineral has to be green, that's not the big deal. You need to look for the other characteristics, like luster and some of the ones we're about to run into now like streak. This is a big one. Notice, look at the color of the two streaks here. This one and this one. Okay? They're the same color. But the rocks are not the same color as their streak. So it can be the case that a rock is a different color than its streak, number one. And number two, it doesn't matter what color it is. So quartz can be like 20 different colors but quartz is always going to have the same streak, which I believe, according to your reference table, is either white to colorless, meaning without color. So what is streak? It's the color of a mineral's powder. Go ahead and pause it if you need to. I'm going to move on. Powder color, of course, does not change even if a mineral color changes. Please keep that in mind. Hardness. The ability for a rock to scratch another rock or to be scratched. So if it has a high hardness, it's difficult to scratch, and it'll scratch a lot of other stuff. Okay, And we use this, um, this Mohs mineral hardness scale to determine the hardness of a mineral. So we just take a look at this scale. Here it is. Okay, um, Talc is going to be an example of a very weak, very soft uh, mineral. We actually make talcum powder from talc. Um, that's the stuff that maybe at the barber they'll uh, put on like the end of a brush and, and kind of wipe down your neck if, they, if you've gotten some kind of um, haircut, you know, to, to kind of soothe your skin. Okay, these are some of the, the weaker ones here up at the top. And then down here you have things like topaz, corundum, and even quartz, which has a very high hardness, meaning it can scratch a lot of other stuff and certainly anything um, that's below it. So quartz could scratch all that stuff. Most importantly, glass here is a 5.5, so on your, um, uh, in your mineral lab, you're go going to be using your minerals to try to scratch a piece of glass. If it scratches the glass, then it has a hardness that's higher than 5.5, so this side. And if it does not scratch the glass, it'll be up here. And if it's somewhere in the middle, like, ooh, I'm not sure if it scratched it, well, you at least know that it's probably really close to 5.5. Finally, fracture is the breaking of a mineral. Okay, so how does it break? This the one we're looking at is actually obsidian or volcanic glass. That's an igneous rock that happens to also have fracture. But another example would be quartz. Again, quartz has a conchoidal fracture. So it looks really nice with smooth sides, but that's um, actually not a good representation of its fracture. It's when you break it. So please don't break the quartz tomorrow, but just kind of a note for you. 
So there's your fracture, and here's cleavage, okay? The breaking of a mineral on an angle based on the arrangement of its internal atoms. So this is very important. What determines how a mineral breaks? What determines a mineral's cleavage? It's internal arrangement of atoms. Th these words are very important. In fact, I, I would add this on the end of your... Um, on the end of your notes here. Just, I would make a jot note of that. That's very important. Internal arrangement of the atoms. This is what does that. Now, what's very key is how you're going to tell the difference. You will have to tell the difference between these tomorrow. So how do you do that? You turn the mineral. Look carefully. Is it reflecting light? Does it have little flat sides that reflect light? That's your trick. So that's going to be 10C. That's the question 10C. You turn the mineral, show it in the light, and if it you can see that it's reflecting light um, off very little flat sides in there. It has cleavage. This is what cleavage might look like. Some examples, feel free to pause and take a look. Okay, some more examples um, of cleavage. The one in the middle is halite. That's cubic cleavage. It looks like a cube. And the one on the right is calcite. That's rhombohedral cleavage. Looks like a rhombus. I don't know if you remember that from math, but a rhombus looks something like this, kind of but probably drawn slightly better. Fracture versus cleavage. So this one is key. Do you see angles? Do you see flat sides? Angles would mean cleavage, but there are none. So this is an example of fracture. It basically fracture means if it looks random. And this looks kind of random. Finally, let's just take a short look at the Earth Science reference table. So turn your reference table to the back page of your ESRT and we'll take a look at the properties of common minerals chart. This will be very brief. I just want to show you where these things are. So when you come into class tomorrow, you have an idea of what's going on. Okay, so simple. On the left side, you've got luster. You're going to notice off the bat, if it's metallic, it's only going to be one of one, two, three, four, or five, because this one can be either, um, minerals. So immediately, if it's metallic, that helps you. So I would always do metallic or non-metallic first the luster first. Everything else down here is going to be non-metallic. Let's look at cleavage and fracture. That's a good one to look at second um, simply because all the stuff that you're dealing with here um, has a check on the left or the right. So it's very easy to tell if it has cleavage, okay, flat sides, reflects light. It's on this side. Look on the left versus the right where it's fracture. So notice it can't be both. Um, colors, again, I would do this last. Okay, I'm not worried about colors. Do that last. Distinguishing characteristics. Notice this is where streak is, so that's very important. You're going to be doing streak for every single mineral. Um, just pay attention to uh, this area where it says distinguishing characteristics. It'll tell you whether it has streak. And, of course, if it doesn't, like here, that means that it might have no streak at all. Finally, um, I look over... Uh, the rest of it, you have uses. This could be helpful, but it's probably going to be tough, you know, um, in terms of what you have in front of you. I think the most important last thing to deal with is this. See if it scratches glass. If it does, it has a high hardness of over 5.5. So like this and this will probably scratch glass. This might scratch glass, maybe not. And these will not. Okay. So kind of keep in mind, these things all together will help you find your way around um, They'll help you find your way around uh, identifying minerals, and that's what we'll be doing in the lab. So I hope this was helpful. Again, please write down any questions that you have. Make sure you fill in both sides of the sheet, fill in a template, and have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys tomorrow.